Hi everyone, welcome to Gnan Cloud Garage. In this session, I am going to talk about mastering IT infrastructure sizing and capacity planning, key insights for organizations. So these concepts are almost similar to when we are working on edge location, on-premises, cloud, either private cloud, hybrid cloud, or multi-cloud locations. But the concept is almost the same, and the technology will be different when we are working on edge, cloud, and on-premises. Okay, so here is the quick agenda. Infrastructure sizing, and I will explain you what is capacity planning, what is the main difference between infrastructure sizing and capacity planning, and finally, real-world examples. So as we are aware, most of the organizations, they have a certain procedures. During the initial stage, we call it as the technology is a day zero, day one, day two, and day n. Day zero means initially we should prepare a solution design for our entire infrastructure. Either it can be edge location, on-premises, or cloud environment. And the day one is nothing but a deploy. That means implement whatever the solution we design, the same solution we have to implement within our environment. And the day two is nothing but the operations. In other words, we call it as day to day to day operations. And the day n means day three, day four, and so on. It includes more onto the life cycle. That means most of the product update and upgrades. So this four stages applicable for all the compute network storage and also hypervisor layer that means virtualization layer and also the virtual machines layer and similarly for application layer all the layers these four scenarios are common okay now let's understand the meaning of infrastructure sizing so as we know infrastructure sizing primarily involves determining the appropriate specifications and resources so within our dc the main resource are servers that means physical servers, storage, and network. Even in the cloud environment also, even though we are front, front end, we are accessing AWS portal, Azure portal, and Google portal. But in the back end, they should have a same server equipment, storage, and network. So required to support a specific application, workload, or system. And it's often project specific and aims to ensure that infrastructure can meet the performance and resource requirements of the immediate needs. That means, let's say we are planning to initiate one of our project. Let's say our project is for a e-commerce project. In order to run our e-commerce application, there may be backend we require a certain resources. For that resources, we have to plan how many servers are needed, how much storage is needed, and how many network devices are needed in order to match our application requirement. Okay, and sizing is typically performed during the initial planning phase of your project when you need to determine how many servers, their configuration, amount of storage and network capacity are necessary to support a specific application or workload. And the goal of infrastructure size is to provide over provisioning, that means wasting resources or under provisioning, causing performance issues, issues of hardware and infrastructure components. The main thing is infrastructure sizing is to prevent over provisioning and under provisioning. That means, suppose our actual requirement is we required a servers are approximately 15 servers. Over provision means if you provisioned as a 25 servers, that means additional 10 servers are completely underutilized. We are not utilizing. And under provisioning means our actual requirement is 15 servers, but we, even though we provisioned the servers are 11 servers. That means still we need a additional four servers. It, it's end up with a, some performance issues. That is the meaning of over provisioning, under provisioning. Whenever we are planning to do infrastructure sizing during our initial days, we should prepare the infrastructure sizing accurately, and we should also maintain some buffer server devices as well as network devices and storage, okay? Suppose if you do not maintain a buffer, definitely we will end up into a performance issues. So that's why the last point says, the goal of infrastructure sizing is to prevent, stop the over provisioning or under provisioning of hardware and infrastructure components, okay? Now let's talk about the 
capacity planning. So this is also one of the key concept. Capacity planning is a broader and ongoing process that focus on long-term management and optimization of IT resources to ensure they can support current and future needs efficiently. Most of the time for capacity management, we may use some internal tools. Suppose if you consider a VMware, VMware environment, our customer is using VMware vSphere and they have a vCenter. And also for the capacity planning, the recommended tool from VMware is ARIA operations. The formally we call it as V Relays Operations Manager. Within a V Relays Operations Manager, we have a feature for capacity planning. So this will help us to do our current usage as well as what is the forecast for the next six months and one year. So based on the forecast, we can plan to add additional nodes within our vCenter cluster. Okay, that's how we can do it. And it consider the organization overall infrastructure and it is ability to handle anticipated growth and changes over time. Okay. And this includes considering factors like increased user counts. It's not only a server increase. It will also applicable capacity planning applicable for user counts and also data volume whatever the storage we have, that storage, if, need, if it is getting full, we need to plan to add a additional storage volumes and new applications and evolving technology. And capacity planning looks at the entire IT ecosystem. It includes servers, storage, network, and even human resources, staffing, and enterprise. It aims to align IT resources with the business goals and ensure that resources are allocated efficiently. And the capacity planning involves continuous monitoring of resource usage, like as I mentioned, ARIA operation tool from VMware. It will help to do continuous monitoring and performance metrics and trying to make informed decisions about when to scale up and also either it is a vertical scaling or horizontal scaling and optimize or invest in new technologies or in infrastructure components. Here, invest new technologies means suppose our VMware infrastructure running with ESXi, vCenter, virtual machine for capacity planning and monitoring and reporting. We are using a cap uh, v Relays operations manager or RE operations. But apart from this in future, if you plan to explore the container application within our vCenter environment, we can configure the container application. That means we can use enterprise grade Kubernetes platform, which is from VMware product name is Tanju, or like you can configure vSphere with the Tanju using workload management option. That is one method or some scenarios if the customer wanted to use a Red Hat OpenShift, even Red Hat OpenShift also supported to run on vSphere platform. So anything you can use, that is one example for new technology or infrastructure components. When we're planning to deploy a container orchestration, either Tanju or OpenShift on vSphere, definitely our existing resources may not be enough some cases that scenario, we can plan to add a new nodes to the existing cluster, or you can create a new cluster dedicatedly for our enterprise grade Kubernetes platforms. Okay. So in addition, another key point is disaster recovery planning and high availability consideration are often part of your capacity planning to ensure business continuity. Let's say we already increased the server count on our production site. Suppose every six months or every year, there is a disaster recovery exercises. During that time, our capacity management tool will help us whether our secondary site is able to manage the workload, equivalent workload from the production. Generally in the production also, we should not, some organization, they maintain active active sites. Some, are, some organization, they maintain active passive sites. Passive site means it will be a standby site. Whenever any disaster recovery occur on primary, then only they will activate the secondary site. So it depends on the organization regulations. So during that scenario also, we have to do some capacity planning on both sites. Okay. Now let's understand what is the key difference between infrastructure sizing and capacity planning. Infrastructure sizing is more focused on short-term activity aimed at provisioning the right resources for a specific project or application. When it comes to capacity planning, is a broader and ongoing process that considers the organization's 
long term it resource needs here is a short term here is the long term long term it resource needs and ensure that resource are utilized efficiently and effectively to support business objectives so in conclusion both are important like infrastructure sizing and capacity planning are important aspects of it management and they often complement each other okay now for better understanding of infrastructure sizing we, uh, let me give you one real world example let's say one of the customer uh, gcg let's say nan cloud garage channel we have a one business unit within our business unit we are running a multiple types of servers like cache server database servers we have a not only one type of database multiple databases like we have a sql database microsoft sql databases and oracle database few servers and there are some web servers and there are some list of application servers so all the server types there is a some number of vms are running so let's say cache we have one vm database six database vms db 148 db servers so the, that is a actual requirement to the customer in the real world scenario and the appropriate vms we need a cpu memory and storage so we given as a cpu count that means virtual machine v cpu count and memory count and also storage capacity approximately it's got 92.5 terabyte is the requirement overall all the virtual machines all virtual machine count is 327 virtual machines so for uh, for this all 367 vms we need approximately the round figure is 93 terabyte storage is needed the same scenario for real time scenarios like uh, even in the organizations they may have xyz company or abc company some may come up with a small sizing some may come up with a medium sizing some may same like t-shirt sizing small medium large extra large so depends on the infrastructure size vm count cpu count memory count and storage count will be vary but the how we are doing the infrastructure sizing concept is almost similar okay so let's dive into how we are going to do the infrastructure sizing now before jump into the infrastructure sizing during the initial stage itself we should uh, in discuss with our internal team and we should finalize the infrastructure models the main infrastructure components are compute that means servers network network devices and storage devices suppose for our easy understanding here i took the example of hpe dl server not only hpe suppose if your your customer is using a different third party vendor also like ibm lenovo we can use fujitsu any dell any other third party servers as well but one example as a solution architect we should have an idea on some server models network models as well as storage models so that it will be easy for us when we are working on a infrastructure sizing and capacity planning when it comes to the servers let's say we have a different type of server form factors we have a tower model servers a rack mount servers and blade servers for our this example i am going to use a rack mount server this is the one of the hp rack mount server let's say the latest model is hp dl380 gen 11 server previously gen 10 gen 10 plus the latest model which is released from hp is gen 11 and when it comes to the network there are multiple aruba switches available from hp those aruba models also any model we can decide on the day one infrastructure design time itself okay let's say for example aruba switches we are planning to use 8325 model okay and comes to the storage even storage hp storage we have a different alatra models like alatra 4k that means 4000 alatra 5k 6k 9k series models are available generally 9k is for a high-end models the cost will also compare it to 6k and 5k cost is huge if the customer is ready to ready to use the high highly efficient models we can propose those models or else we'll go with a n minus one kind of models like instead of going to high-end alatra 9k model we may prefer for a alatra 6k models okay so that is how we can design the infrastructure model at the day one itself okay once the models are finalized let whatever the infrastructure 
requirement we have. This is the requirement we received from a customer. Just for our easy understanding, I mentioned as GCCBU, any of the organization business unit. They given you clearly the VMs count, CPU count, or memory overall total and capacity, storage capacity. So as a solutioning architect, we should first gather the total CPU, total memory, total storage. Accordingly, we can plan the server count, storage count, how many storage boxes needed, and how many network equipment are needed, we can do the infrastructure sizing. So for this one, for easy understanding, I just prepared one sample Excel sheet. Either you can use, or every organization, they have some internal tools. You can use those internal tool, or you can use a manual calculation. Any method is fine, okay? So for example, I'm taking one Excel sheet, whatever the sizing I am showing in the slide, the same information I am trying to explain from the Excel sheet. Let's say within our Excel sheet, whatever we have discussed in the slide, 367 virtual machine, 93 TB of storage, and 2750 virtual CPU totally, and 7222 GB memory, okay? So for the before propose, we need to prepare a one tab for a proposed server sizing just for our quick understanding. So when we go to the proposed server sizing tab, I just prepared a few options easily. Let's say our BU requirement, first we can make the total CPU count. Let's say our total CPU count is 2750. Just let me make that value here. And the same way other value also, just copy and paste it here just for our quick understanding we have a cpu count and memory count and there is a one section for cpu calculation and another table for memory calculation just to avoid confusion i just make it segregated for our quick understanding and cpu ratio generally in the real time scenarios we have a one is to one ratio one is to two ratio and one is to four ratio this is the general cpu ratios one is to one one is to two one is to four means whatever the customer given requirement of total cpu the same equivalent number of physical core if you want to provide to the customer we consider it as a one is to one ratio that means we are almost equaling the same number we are giving the equal number of physical course of servers we are giving to the customer. Definitely the number of server count will be increased when we choose one is to one scenario, okay? And the second point, another point is one is to two means, let's say this is the actual requirement and this requirement we can divide it with two so that we can re require how many actual physical cores are needed, okay? Let's say, we have a three options, one is to one, one is to two, and one is to four. One is to four means the required CPUs divided by four, then we required a actual how many physical cores we need to calculate for infrastructure sizing. So for the, our example, I am taking a CPU ratio as one is to two, okay? Suppose your organization, initial day itself, we should confirm with our internal team or respect to customer, which ratio they are looking for. They are looking for one is to one or two or four. So the procedure is same. I'm just taking the one is to two. When you take a one is to two, what we can do is physical core. How we can do physical core calculation is you can put the equal, the total CPU requirement, okay? And then we have to divide it by two because we already finalized the ratio is one is to two. When you type divided by two, so we need a, this many cores, physical cores. So now if you want to finalize how many servers are needed, we need to consider this number to calculate instead of 2750 because we are going with a one is to two ratio. Now for our testing, we already decided our server model is HPE DL380 Gen 11 model. And Gen 11 also, we are planning to use 32 core processor, okay? So 32 core processor, every server comes with a single processor or minimally two physical process. So let's say if you have two physical processor, each processor consider with a 32 core. So that means two into 32, totally 64 cores. So this course also, if you want to 
consider more than 64 also it possible okay how we can validate this information is you can just copy the server model and go to the google you can just type it as a server model specifications in the google quick specs when you type quick specs in the google you directly found a article from the hpe website so hp website will give you a pdf document we can download the pdf document to analyze okay i just download the pdf when you open that pdf see you can see this is the server model hp dl380 gen 11 and if with interest of our time i am not go through the, all the steps and straight away we can go through the cpu model because we are talking on a cpu now so let's go to the CPU within our document. Just to scroll down and look for a CPU information. When you see here, there are a different type of CPUs. One model is CPU Platinum. Generally, Platinum CPU cost is a bit high. If the customer is okay to choose the Platinum, we are good to choose the Pro Platinum. And another model is Gold Processor. And if you see the platinum processor the maximum cores available for until the 60 cores available if you see 60 core and this 60 core processor one process speed is 1.9 gigahertz generally each server comes with two processor 2 into 60 120 cores available but it is a platinum so the cost will be high so it depends actually. Sometimes we may recommend to customer platinum. Sometimes we may recommend to gold. Suppose today within our spreadsheet, we are planning to use 32 core. Even within a 32 core also, there is a different CPU speeds. For example, we can look for a better CPU speed. If you see here 32 core, there is a 3.1 gigahertz CPU speed. Let's say we can plan to use this processor. So that means within our spreadsheet, you can just highlight that we are planning to use gold processor model and we are using a 32 core. So total cores are 64. Now we have to calculate the server count approximately based on our physical required physical core, how many servers are needed. This calculation, how we can do is, we have to do like a required physical cores. Like let's say required physical course value is 1375 and we have to divide it by total CPU cores like uh, one server server total CPU cores. Let's say our server CPU cores are 64. So you can type the formula equal and choose the physical core and you can put divided by 64. When you type 64, you will find the server count is server count approximately 21.48. That means the proposing server count will be, we can make it as a round figure like 22 servers are needed. Okay. But when you provide this 22 server requirement to customer, they already in the day one itself, they are started consuming the full resources. So in the production environment, we should not provide this way. So when once we finalize the server count, we have to add a one additional HA failover node. If you remember within our vCenter concept, VMware concept, within our vCenter cluster, we have a feature for HA and DRS. What is the functionality of HA is failover mechanism. HA means high availability. Within our 22 servers, in case of one server down, immediately resources virtual machines can be migrated to another host. If you already started consuming the 22 server on day one itself, definitely there will be an impact to our production. So recommendation is we need to propose a one HA failover node additionally, that is one node. And we should also propose for a buffer server count. Generally buffer server count, we can propose for a 20 to 30 percent free resource range. Okay, you can choose either 20 or you can put the buffer as a 25 or 30. It depends on the customer's choice. But the minimum recommendation is 20 percentage. And you can go until 30 percent or more than 30 also. It's fine. Generally, I'm giving a recommended percentages here. You can modify these values based on your sizing. Okay, let's say 20 percent means how we can calculate is let's say equal to our actual physical core and multiply with 
our actual percentage, let's say I'm taking it 25%. 25% means 0.25. So value is 343.75 processors we need to add additionally. That means how many servers for this uh, 343 physical courses? Again, select this servers divided by our total physical course 64 for each server. So when you calculate, it's equivalent to 5.37. 5.37 means the recommended server count will be like buffer server count is six, okay? Similarly, if you want to calculate for a 30% buffer, the same equal to our actual total physical core, okay? When you select the total physical core and we have to multiply with percentage 30, so 0.30, this is the pro actual CPU count, required physical, additional required physical core count. Now, how many servers means? Again, select this course divided by our physical server total process. Total CPU cores are 64, okay? So that means it is going to the additional one more server. 6.4 means it will require a seven servers. If you go for a 25%, we require a six servers. Let's say if I'm planning for 20%, we require a five servers, okay? If you want to reduce the cost to the customer, you can slightly modify these counts, okay? Depends on the day one discussions, you can adjust this account. Let's say I'm taking the average 25% buffer, six servers. Now you can calculate the total server count. When you calculate these three total server count, just submit. How many servers? If you select all, you will find the server count is 29. Okay. So this is the actual required server. We have to propose it to the customer. Okay, 29 server. Now, how about memory? Memory also, this we already got the 29 server with buffer. So we have to distribute this memory equally to this 24, 29 server. That means memory also automatically comes with a additional buffer, okay? So memory for each server approximately. Each server approximately, how we can calculate is, we have to calculate the required memory divided by total number of server. So just for our easy understanding, I'm writing here, required memory divided by total servers. So our actual requirement is equal to, again, formula, total memory 722 divided by, and our actual server count is 29. Now press enter. So when we press enter, this is the actual, I'm just removing the formula for other cells. Okay, so actual required memory for each server approximately 249. That means it's close to 250 GB memory required for each server. Again, how we can propose for each server is, generally for the server models, Gen 11 models, there is a specification how we can calculate the memory. So again, go to the our spreadsheet, our official document, TL380 Gen 11 quick specs document. Now look for a memory how much the memory size is available for this server, okay? So for this server, if you scroll down, you can see the memory information. So we have to propose how much memory we are going to utilize. Let's say sometimes the memory will be like a 256 GB. Sometimes it will be like a 384, like that it's available. If you want to add a 256 GB, you can add from this server, it will show you all the memory sizing also. How much memory? See, required is 16 GB, 32 GB, 64 GB, 92, 128 GB, 256 GB. But our current scenario, each server required is 249. So the very nearer number is 256. But if you want to calculate the 256 plus additional memory, for example, 256 plus I want to calculate with 128 the sum value is 384 GB. So the nearest figure is either you can choose 256 GB memory, but it is very close to the actual value. So better we will go with here some additional buffer. So I'm just proposing as a 384 GB memory. That is for a single server. Each server memory is 384 GB. 
once the 384 GB is finalized, how we can calculate the total memory? Total memory is very simple, just equal to our server count multiplied by our actual memory for each server. Press enter. You will see the memory will be total memory will be like a it's equivalent to 10 terabyte of memory. But our production requirement is only 7.2 terabyte memory. 7.2 so we are giving a additional buffer like with 25% or around 30% buffer we are giving. So when we are giving with additional buffer during the day one itself there will be no performance issues and also that whatever the buffer is available that will be useful for a future growth as well. Okay, so this is how we can do the calculation. Now, from this slide, we and from this calculation, we understand we need a server count is 29. Okay, hope you understand. Now, another thing is, this is a only for the customer application requirement. How about the, our management server? So we have to propose a additional management compartment. For management, we are using a same server model, HP DL380 Gen 11 model. And minimally, we should propose one or two. Generally, optimal recommendation is go with a quantity three servers. Okay, and I'm choosing the same two gold processor, 32 core, 64 core. And this time management server, I'm going with a less memory, 256 GB compared to production memory. Production memory, we are going with 384 GB. And for the management server, going with a 256 GB. And local hard drive for the OS installation. And NIC ports, let's say we need a six NICs. And ILO for the remote management. ILO means integrated light sort. So how many servers totally? 29 plus three. So we need a server count is 32 servers is the total servers. Okay. Now coming to the network switches. How we can do the network switch sizing. So we already got the server count. The total server count is 32. The 32 is like a 29 for production workload and for three for a management server. Why management server means this management server cluster consists of our Active Directory, DNS, and also DHCP, NTP services, any monitoring tool, backup server, vCenter server, all the management infrastructure VMs are running on this management compartment. Because this 29 servers we are dedicating for our business application VMs. And management compartment dedicated for our production management infrastructure VMs. Okay, uh, so the we count, we got the idea on network switches, uh, before finalizing the network ports count, we need to get the overall server count is 32. And we are also thinking each server, we must have a six NICs. Six NICs with 25 GBPS speed or 10 GBPS speed. It depends on customer's choice. Minimally, production will go with minimally 10 GBPS speed and more than 10 GBPS will go with 25 GBPS speed also. Okay, so six NICs means you can multiply total NIC ports are 32 into six. So we require totally 192 ports. And required production switches, let's say we are planning to propose a 48 port switch. So when we plan to propose a 48 port switch, we need to calculate the number as a equal to number of ports divided by our switch ports. Switch ports are 48. So we need a four switches. So proposing a Aruba 8360 48 port switch, the switch count is four. Okay. So even if you want to maintain an additional buffer, you can order additional switch as well. Okay. But currently network equipment, we can good to go with the required switches. And management ports also 48 port one switch is enough because management port is for a ILO access. For ILO access, anyhow, we can use 32 ports within the 48. Still there are a remaining ports. Okay it will be useful for your future growth. So the switch count also finalized. Now come to the block storage sizing. For the block storage sizing, there is a different options. Some scenario customer may use virtual SAN. For virtual SAN, VMware itself, it's providing a vSAN sizing calculator. That is one method. Similarly, we are planning to use within our discussion, we are planning to utilize our Alectra storage. Alectra storage means requirement is we need a storage box and we need a fiber channel switches to communicate between ESX to switch, fiber channel switch, switch to storage access. Okay. So back to our sizing sheet for the block storage, we can use a one of the tool called Ninja stars. So this Ninja star tool will help us how we can calculate the 
how we can calculate the storage calculations. Okay, let me launch the tool. See, Ninja Star tool is helping. This tool we can download from the Google. And this tool will help us how we can choose the Alatra storage. But as per our sizing calculation, we required size is 93 terabyte. So for 93 terabyte, we have a Alatra different models, five series, 5K model, 6K model and 9K model. If we plan to choose a 6K model, choose any one random model. For suppose the first one, if I select 6010, the 6010, the maximum sizes are available 23 minimum, maximum 92 terabyte. When I select 92 terabyte, the usable capacity is 66 terabyte only, but our requirement is 93 terabyte. So this model is not suitable. So just remove this option and go here. And I'm going with the next model, 6030 model. When we select 6030 model, here also we have different sizes. Suppose if I select 138 TB, this 138 TB is the raw capacity. Usable capacity is 79. Again, 79 is it's a lesser than our actual requirement. So we'll go with the next version, next sizing, 184 terabyte. When I select 184 terabyte, we will get the raw capacity 184, but usable capacity 135 terabyte. 135 means it's almost nearer to 93. That means we also have a additional buffer capacity within our storage. So that means we should recommend this model to our customer. So let me copy this information and we can paste it into our Excel sheet so that we have a storage sizing information also ready. We have the model. Storage model is Alatra 6030 and it is a four unit space. This is the story trending with multiple drives. Okay. And how many drives under 24? Uh, each drive it comes with a 7.6 terabyte NVMe drive. Okay. Non-volatile memory SSD drive. Okay. So this is how we can configure the storage sizing and bill of materials you can also find how many equipment is needed as part of the storage switch uh, for the storage we need a storage switches as well as we need a fiber channel ports and also some software licensing okay so then another point is hardware bomb hardware bomb means for how many bill of materials we need a quantity just say server quantity we got the number is 29 so we can write the server quantity 29 plus management server. So total count is 32. And Alatra storage, we need only one storage. And the SAN switches minimally two. And the top of the rack switches, we need the top of rack switches are four top of rack switches. And the management switch, only one switch. And the rack, generally rack is for 32 servers and all, either one or two. We can just verify the rack layout. Let's say the server count is 32. When we are planning for 32, definitely server rack is 42 for each rack. So when we have a two rack, it will cover for a not only 29, we can add 30, 31 and 32. So two racks will be enough. So I just mentioned the rack count is two. This is for a hardware bill of materials. Now come to the software bomb. Software bomb, we need a vCenter license, like uh, vCenter standard one license is needed. And Enterprise Plus, we need license. Enterprise Plus, how we can count the licenses? It uh, depends on our ESX calculation. We have a 32 servers and each server running with a two processor. So we have to multiply with two processors. That is our actual license quantity. So equal to 32 multiply with two, we need a 64 processor license for our ESX vSphere Enterprise Plus 8.x license. And Windows OS and Linux OS depends on the customer's choice. We can ask, we, can, we have a 367 VMs actually. Our requirement is 367 VMs. Within the 367 VMs, we can get the clarification from customer. We can divide accordingly the software bomb. Let's say for example, uh, 300, uh, within the 367, the customer may planning to use for a equally. Equally means just calculate with 367 divided by two. The value is 183. Let's say 184 VMs here. We need 184 Windows licenses. Similarly, 184 V license for a Ready Hat Linux. So that we have equal license information also covered for software bomb.
okay in future if they want to plan to use any kubernetes environment like tanju or openship that we can able to add in future software bombs okay as part of the capacity planning now rack layout also this is a sample rack layout how we can do the rack layout see within the rack we can use last bottom two racks will be one unit two unit space will be we cannot use this is for a reserved for airflow from the third third unit onwards we can place our servers let's say for our easy understanding i already placed the 29 servers now our actual count is 32 so let me place the additional servers here like we need to copy paste the 30 and we can paste one more server here 31 and one more server here 32. So that means all the servers are already covered within our racks. And we have a four unit Alatra storage. If you see the Alatra storage, the unit size is four unit. So four unit means within our rack, it will cover for a four unit, one, two, three, four unit size. And it requires a two fiber channel switches. And we have a four Aruba switches and one management switch. This is how we can prepare a rack layout. Okay. Hope you understand how we can do the rack layout as well now back to our slide so until now we understand how we can do sizing for server how we can do sizing for network how we can do sizing for storage and as well as how we can do the calculation for a software bomb how many sx licenses how many v center how many windows OS license and all okay and another example capacity planning let's say Currently, we are starting plan to start with your two, uh, two racks. In future, as part of capacity planning, if the customer requirement is keep on growing, we can add a additional three, third rack and fourth rack and so on. There is no limit. As part of capacity planning for the future growth, we will keep on growing our server rack and stack counts. Like we are adding the additional servers. We are also increasing the storage count. We can increase the switches and as well as network devices. Okay. So hope you understand the what is importance of infrastructure sizing and capacity planning. And I just shown you the manual calculation. Some organization, they may have some automatic tools or internal tools also for the sizing calculations. Just for our easy understanding, I explained the manual Excel options, okay? Based on your comfort, you can use any method of calculations, okay? And for capacity planning, we can use ARIA operations. That is one best example how we can do automatic calculations okay so that's it for today hope you understand this concept thank you if you're watching this video first time please do view like share and subscribe to the grand cloud Gary channel if you're already subscribed i appreciate all your support bye for now